Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be restoring my iPhone 3GS 16 gig running iOS 3.1.2. You can see at the moment, it's currently very scratched and beaten up both on the back and front of this phone. Now on the back, it sort of looks like someone sandpapered it and on the front, it's been dropped on its front uh, quite severely and is quite damaged as you can see there. Also on the screen itself are a row of dead pixels up the top as well as down the bottom. Now, this is a known sort of common issue with the first gen 3G and 3GS phones. Some just got dead pixels. So we're gonna be fixing all this today. So a new housing, a new screen, and a new digitizer are all going onto this iPhone 3GS. Now, iOS 3 was the first original release uh, for the iPhone 3GS, which is what this is running. And this phone I actually got for free. Uh, it was sort of thrown in with two iPhone 4S's I bought on eBay. And this just come along in the parcel as well. So obviously they didn't want it. They just thought I would have a better use for it. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm gonna be fixing it up um, to basically mint condition. So this is my first time actually in an iPhone below the iPhone 4 because it, these phones aren't worth anything and they're not. it's not like I'm fixing it up to sell it or anything. I'm fixing it up just because it's an old phone and I like fixing phones and you guys like watching my phone repair videos. So this is for you guys because I've been asked continuously to fix this phone up. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So the 3GS is relatively easy to repair with. Most of the things you need to take apart are labeled, like all the connectors have one, two, three, four, five in them. So you can't really forget to unplug something. And because it's an early iPhone, it's pretty simple to work on compared to say the iPhone 7 or something, which is a lot more involved, I would say, than the iPhone 3Gs and 3GSs. The hardest part of this repair, and I would say any iPhone repair, is the volume controls, mute switch, and power button assembly. The power button on the 3GS is relatively easy to get installed and working, but the volume controls and mute switch were quite difficult because I had to get the mute switch actually aligned properly with the actual uh, switch inside the phone to the uh, outside switch that you actually flick. If they're not aligned, it'll just move around, but it won't actually change the mute, um, so you'll have a broken mute switch. Um, and the volume controls, they seem to be a little bit stiff and harder to press than they originally were. But I think that's just because of the housing I got isn't exactly the most accurate of housings uh, when it comes to lining up things, because it was only uh, 12 bucks from China. So you can see here, this is the new housing, uh, very clean compared to the old one, but you have to transfer literally everything from the old one, including the camera bracket, uh, the headphone jack, little um, metal insert, the speaker grills, which I didn't actually do because I couldn't get them out. So I'll just have to purchase those elsewhere and get those installed at a later date. The metal bezel, um, all the power button, volume controls, dock connector, vibrate motor, everything you can think of, and all the way down to the little SIM card eject um, piece of plastic that uh, that actually sits at the top of the phone that when you push the uh, pin in it will actually eject the SIM card. All that has to be transferred over. So it's quite an involved job and this entire process took me about an hour. Now like I said, first time I've ever worked on anything below the iPhone 4 and it wasn't hard, it just was time consuming and very fiddly um, because all iPhone screws are absolutely tiny because well you can't put big screws in a tiny device. So Overall, wasn't hard, just time consuming. And uh, you know, a problem with the 3Gs and 3GSs was the battery expanding. So if you have one that has an expanding battery, uh, it's not hard to get the battery out. All you gotta do is remove the two screws, get the screen out, and then there's about six screws and the logic board comes out with a few cables disconnected and you're right in front of the battery and you can remove that and replace it with a new one if your 3GS has a bad battery that's expanding and it's cracking all the back or putting pressure on the logic board itself. Mine didn't have that issue, which is great. So there was no damage to the old housing besides all the scuffing and scratching. Um, but I have seen a few with the battery expanding and causing giant cracks in the back of the phone. So if you have giant cracks in the back of your 3G or 3GS, uh, that's definitely an expanded battery. So I'd wanna open that up and just relieve the pressure off the logic board. Or you could do some serious damage to the logic board itself and then 
render the phone useless um, itself. Now, like I said, really old phone, and really the only reason I'm doing this is for you guys. And plus, I like to fix phones. It's just a hobby of mine. I don't fix them. I'm not. I don't work at a repair shop or anything. I just fix phones purely because I find it fun and uh, interesting. So. Like I said, this is an old piece of Apple history and I like to fix them up just to, you know, see exactly how they were built. Um, so connecting up the screen I actually purchased on eBay, nothing happened. Uh, it was recognized in iTunes, but the screen wouldn't light up. But after connecting up the old one, you can see here that the phone continued to boot up. I actually had a heap of iPhone 3G and 3GS parts I brought for about, I think it was like $2 or something. I got a video on that if you're interested. But basically, I connected up one of those screens and the LCD worked, but the digitizer itself was faulty. So all I had to do was take that back off again and I'm gonna transfer that good LCD onto a new digitizer and home button assembly, which is relatively easy to do on the 3G and 3GS. With newer iPhones, the LCD and the digitizer are laminated together, which reduces some tiny little gap in between the screen and probably makes the phone thinner itself. But obviously, before we go ahead and do that, uh, now that I know the phone is fully functional, I've tested the volume controls, the mute switch, power button, all that kind of stuff, I can go ahead and screw the logic board in, and then I'll get the screen and um, start working on that. So with the screen itself, there is four screws holding the LCD in itself. So once you remove those four screws, the LCD separates from the digitizer itself. Now you can actually take the glass bit off of the plastic frame, but because I have a load of these lying around, I just grabbed another one and went ahead and screwed in the LCD. After replacing the five screws, uh, two on each side and one at the top, I was able to reinstall this new digitizer paired with an old LCD onto my 3GS. Now the cords were a little bit bent because they've been sitting in storage for quite some time. And uh, I went ahead and powered up the phone itself and you can see here that it powers on. Once I got the okay that it was powering on, I took the plastic screen protector off there um, and put the phone back together. Now, along with those 3GS parts, I got a load of 3GS screen protectors, so I'll also be putting a plastic screen protector on this uh, phone to just protect the new digitizer. The phone itself is in 100% mint condition. The only scratching would be on that metal band that we transferred from the old housing. Now, compared to the old uh, screen and housing, you can see how much nicer this phone now looks. It's no longer scratched and smashed. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more iPhone videos and iPhone restoration videos, go ahead and check out the iPhone playlist down in the description. And if you're not already subscribed, go and hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys next time. Another one of my great videos.